guys! So I am super excited to film this today, this being my second book review with a themed drink to go along. I'm so happy! Well, let's, let's start the book. That helped. The book that I have here is The Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. So Children of Blood and Bone is a West African inspired YA fantasy. It tackles racism, it tackles oppression, it tackles these social constructs that are within like the uh, people of color communities like uh, having straight hair versus like kinky hair and being light skinned or dark skinned. And the fact that she cleverly tackles these and it's all wrapped up in this action packed YA novel that is set basically in fantastical Africa. Yes please. Yeah, yes. I'm so in love with this book. It is not even funny. In this world, there is this intricate magic system. There are diviners and magi. They're born basically marked as magic users by having this completely stark white hair. They aren't able to use their abilities until I want to say it's like 13 or puberty. I can't remember which. But they're able to use, they come into their magic then. And it's not a thing to be ashamed of. Like amongst their people, they're proud of it. This is their heritage. It's handed to them by the gods. But the people who do not have these abilities are afraid of them. They basically treat them like animals. And eventually people are so frightened. The king has oppressed it entirely. He's abolished it. He said no more magic. And then the adults who passed down these abilities, the ones who are already able to use their magic, have all been killed off in an effort to squelch it completely. Now Zaylee, who is one of our main characters, is her mother was a reaper. Her magic was was tied up in life and death. There are titers whose power had to do with water. There are burners whose power was, whose power was fire related. There are um, all different types of magic and they're well explained and it's each tied to a god and that particular god's history. Now, so the, these people after this this horrible act that just basically took away all of the magic using adults in their community. They are growing up without their parents. They're growing up with nothing left but legends of what their powers used to be. Some of the adults who survived, who weren't murdered, who weren't harmful so to speak, they they are living now with the memory of having basically part of their soul tied off, cut off from them forever because they, they knew what it was like to have these powers, to have this ability, this connection to their gods and now they can't use it anymore. Just fuck I love this story so much. But then something happens and Zaylee has the ability or the opportunity to bring magic back. But she doesn't really want this responsibility not because she's lazy or that she doesn't want to do it or that she's scared. It's more so that she's afraid of failing and letting her people down. She doesn't want to make things worse for them because thus far the stigma that she feels like she carries is that she just ruins things. So you have this person who feels like she just can't do anything right but the opportunity falls in her lap and now she's the only one who can do it and she's terrified that she's gonna make things worse for her people instead of better. We also have a prince and a princess who are fighting with being raised in this castle and told that these magic users are little better than demons that they must all be basically wiped out that there's no use for them going forth in this new kingdom and then they meet daily and they're kind of trying to carry over this ideal that they're raised with with what they're seeing in front of them when they're for the first time getting out and interacting with these people and then we also have Zaylee's brother Zane who has basically been on the outside looking in he's second hand he's of course lost his mother as well and he sees what it's like for the diviners and the magi to be oppressed but he doesn't deal with it directly because while his sister has magic he does not it's just fuck there's nothing else really that i can tell you about this book because the book doesn't come out until march and i'm so fucking stoked for it to come out trust me when i say that you have got to read this book because from the the world building the character development the the struggles that these characters deal with internally, the oppression that their people deal with, like being accused of basically being monsters, being seen as demons when really they're magic for them. It's a religious experience and it's their connection to the gods who created them and have other people who cut it, cut them off from it because they're afraid 
and then they have to live in this world where they can't even have their magic as protection and they're being vilified and it just fucking oh my god just read it okay trust me there is nothing that i disliked about this book it was goes without saying absolutely five star read for me now talk about this drink <laughs> because the drink is west african based i tried to think of a drink that had like a west african aspects of it it would have been cool to have one that had like um a local beer or wine but that would have taken a long time for me to wait, make some of the wines i did see some that i want to try and it looked really good but instead i have just taken like hibiscus tied that in and i have made a hibiscus and a rose hip latte so let's talk about how i made that Holy crap, it's so good. All I'm doing now is making the hibiscus rum. That's what I'm going to do. I just have this little shaker bottle here. I took the shaker ball out and I'll show you. Tazo Passion Tea, which is hibiscus with rose hip, orange peel, and other passion fruit flavors, whatever the other passion flavors are. Whatever. So all I've done is shove the four tea bags down in there, hanging off to the side, good old bottle of rum, so that was like most of my bottle, but I really don't like rum anyway, so I will, whatever I don't use for this drink, I'll probably put in other shit or continue to make this drink. Because I'm not drinking straight rum regardless. So I could have dumped really the whole bottle in there if it would have fit. And I, I wouldn't have minded because rum is nasty. As I'm sitting here looking off my fingers. Anyway, that's that quick step. It's already starting to turn pink a little. And I will just let that percolate for quite a while. I'm going to go bed. I probably won't even film this video today. So let this sit. Away from the sun. I don't think I put it in the fridge either. Yeah, I should let it sit for like a day. So for the base of this drink, I used almond milk because I'm trying to cut off my dairy to eventually be vegan. So the major base of this drink is almond milk. I filled the glass about three quarters of the way. That way I can't put too much cotton picking liquor in it. I mean, I will anyway, but now, because of the acidity from the hibiscus, if you make this drink, you need to use either full fat milk or non-dairy milk drink, like almond milk, cashew milk, whichever, because if you use like skim milk or 30%, 50%, whatever the hell that other shit is, the acidity from the hibiscus will make it curdle, so it has to be full fat milk or non-dairy. I'm also putting some half and half in it just because I want it a little richer. And cut my dairy all the way out, yeah, but don't don't judge me, okay? This this is a bad idea. After I mix all the ingredients, I'm gonna put it into another cup because I can already see that this is not gonna it's not gonna go appropriately. I also added a little bit of cardamom just because it adds an earthy flavor that I really enjoy. So not a whole whole bunch, just earth earth it up a little. Also add some sugar. Cause I have a sweet tooth and I tried without the sugar and it was earthy but I still need a little bit of sweet to go with it because I, the hibiscus tea is completely completely unsweetened then I have my prepared hibiscus rum you see how dark it got from the four uh, passion tea bags so this is rose hip and hibiscus tea it is fucking phenomenal I'm now going to add it to my latte mix That looks pretty. Can't drink it like that though. Probably get a stomachache. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is pour this into this cup. Muchas better. Then, with the last step and the best part, because it's another reason I added the half and half instead of using um, just the almond milk, is I wanted to make sure it was gonna froth at least a little. So I got an immersion blender for like eight bucks from Walmart. You don't have to, I'm sure you could just blend it, it just won't be frothy, but I wanted the immersion blender. I pulse, because if you just, I, I, you have to pulse and then you have to move up and down the cup 
you have a dirty mind, I have a dirty mind. Just, let's just leave it unsaid for this once, okay? I'm gonna add more sugar, cause that, very tart. Very fucking tart. That's probably too much sugar. Bug I, I do what I want. Don't do this in a cup, do it in a bowl, okay? Do it in a bowl for God's sakes. Okay, here we have our pretty pink frothy latte. And because I'm really extra, I want to put whipped cream on it. <laughs> and there we have it. <laughs> a lovely rum spiked hibiscus latte. And it, it smells fucking phenomenal. Oh my god, that's so good. Mm. It's probably the best thing I've ever made. So guys, that was my review for the Children of Blood and Bone. I, again, I can't. I, there are so many things I want to talk about. I can't wait until this book comes out because you just, holy fucking crap balls, you just, you've got to freaking read it, okay? You've got to. Really, there, there's nothing else I can say for that, but just, if you don't have this book pre-ordered, what the hell is wrong with you? Go read it. Go. Oh, you can't read it. Sorry. Go pre-order it. Go pre-order it right now. I have a copy here, and I'm pre-ordering the hard copy, and if a UK cover is different, I'm buying that one too. This I, I have a hard time imagining anything beating this out for uh, my favorite book of 2018. So that is it for this review, guys. I don't really have too much of a recipe, but I will type up the proportions of what I put in the description box down below so you can try this if you'd like it. I will also put the original recipe that I bastardized, and I will catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.